Hey, welcome back. Today I want to talk about why I'm even interested in probiotics. You know, it's really great to be able to bake, bake different kinds of bread and, and uh, make sauerkraut and these type of things. But the real reason why I ever even got involved in it and why you should too is because it's one of the most amazing supernatural substances that is known. It's probably the most amazing supernatural substance that's known and for people's health. It's something that was taken for, for all time. And the amazing properties of what is called probiotics, but it's really the fermentation of different foods that preserves it and creates this energy that's in it that they say is living bacteria, but it's so much more than that. It's actually an energy that wards off any uh, disease, any viruses, and also purifies your body completely. And there are quite a number of studies, and I can't really go through all of them now. What I really want to do is show you how to find them. You, you just put probiotics or lactobacillus, which is one of the main ones when you make sauerkraut, when you make wine properly, uh, when you make uh, ferment milk, or when you make sourdough bread. And the studies are there if you put lactobacillus on probiotics and then what your subject is that you're wanting to, to purify in your body, say heavy metals or plastics, uh, bisphenol, bisphenol A, or um, viruses or many different toxins. I want to show you some studies, just run through them very quickly. I don't, I'm not really going to read all of them to you, but... Um, the main thing is you want to take this for medicine for for health you think of it like your food is your medicine you want to take this every day to purify your body get rid of any toxins it's amazing the things that that this get it actually it gets rid of them in a in a supernatural way it basically uh, dissolves them or makes them completely br break down and not even be able to be detected anymore as opposed to latching on and taking them out of the body which uh, traditional chelation which is means to claw which is um, a process where they inject a chemical into your body to grab onto heavy metals and pull them out physically the, this actually is able to transform them into uh, basically I can't say what because they disappear. And so there's many different substances like that. I'm going to show you some studies. Uh, here's one that says probiotic administration mi mitigates uh, bisphenol A, reproductive toxicity in zebrafish. It basically shows that the ingredients that are in plastics that are toxic are able to be completely wiped away and wiped out. Here's another one that said uh, biodegradation which is actually what I'm saying is wiping out. It's a degrading, a biodegrading to where they're rendered not even detectable any longer. And biodegradation of chlorpyrifos by lactic acid bacteria during kimchi fermentation. Kimchi is basically like sauerkraut. Uh, it's, a, it's a different kind of cabbage they make in Japan. But people ate this with their meals and then in the same way that a starter acts as a starter on your dough to make um, sourdough bread. This acts like a starter in your digestive tract on any of the food you've eating, uh, any of the food you've eaten, and ferments that food also before it passes and completely restores your immunity and takes these, these chemicals. Now, chlorpyrifos, what it is, it's a very harsh chemical used uh, on wheat one of the herbicides, one of the uh, chemicals that keeps bugs away, an insecticide. And it's extremely toxic. They've outlawed it now. But it's able in your body to completely wipe it out. Now, I did another video on this, but I'll just repeat it very quickly. We examined the role of microorganisms in the degradation of chlorpyrifos during kimchi fermentation. Chlorpyrifos was degraded rapidly until day three, it took 83% of it disappeared in three days, and then completely by day nine. This is just like a magical uh, substance that's able to completely render it gone. 
And so it can do that in your body also. Uh, you know, the thing is, they don't have a lot of studies on this because what they do is they do studies on chemicals most of the time that they can make money off of because when they create a chemical, they're able to patent it because they created it. But the nature, natural things that God put here to, to take care of us and take care of our health, nobody can patent, so nobody can really make money on them, so nobody puts money into a study. So people have been started to think because it doesn't have studies, it must not be uh, true or an extensive list of studies. No, it's just that nobody has backed it with a bunch of money because they can't, aren't able to take it and then profit off of it because it's in the natural domain and nobody's allowed to patent things that are in the natural domain. God has the patent on that. But they're the most amazing things. And, and ferment, fermented foods, this, uh, this is a, just a couple of the things that it takes out. Uh, and here's uh, the one, bio, bio, re, bio remediation and tolerance of humans to heavy metals through microbial processes. And I'm just going to, what you want to do when you pull up these studies, you can put probiotics study and heavy metals or probiotics study and plastics or the chemical or viruses or um, COVID or anything like that. And I'm going to get to that next, but I want to show you what you do then is you can just go to the bottom to the conclusion. That's the quickest way to look without reading the entire study. The conclusions are always right at the end. And this says, and it's, you know, it's a couple paragraphs, so then you can skim down quickly, but it says lactobacilli and potentially other bacterial types used in the food industry as probiotics are ideal organisms to use as an adjunct tool to prevent and reduce heavy metal toxicity and prevent absorption of metals into the human body. Lactobacilli have a strong record of safe application in the food industry and as probiotics as probiotics and they have the ability to bind and sequester metals. These are the conclusions of all the study that was done to prove these things out. Now, just recently there's been news that natto extract directly inhibits viral infections including SARS-CoV-2 in vitro. And it, what it is, is a soybean, but it's fermented. So this property is coming from the fermentation. It's the same thing. Uh, you can go through any of these fermented things and they all have this property to be able to biodegrade toxins, to completely break down and get rid of heavy metals, uh, to completely get rid of well, there's many different toxins, of course. There's the plastics and petroleum toxins and insecticides and all these type of things. But in viral loads or in immunity, they also have the ability to uh, extend your life and create a high degree of immunity because it's proven that your immune system is largely made up in your gut. And it, it um, acts as a, as a wall or a or a defense against any, anything entering into your body. But I just want to briefly touch on this. The abstract or the beginning when they talk, it's, like the, it's like, kind of like the conclusion, but it comes at the beginning. Natto, a, tradition, a traditional Japanese fermented soybean food, is well known to be nutritious and beneficial for health. In this study, we examined whether natto impairs infection by viruses, such as acute respiratory syndrome, coronavirus, as well as bovine, herpes virus, and so on and so forth. And then what we do is we can come right down here to the conclusion. All the scientific data is, is done in the middle. And in the, in the end, you can see, quit moving around as much as, in this study, we showed that the natto extract inhibited infectious ability of BHV1 and SARS-CoV-2 to the cells and degraded the glycoprotein of uh, BHV1, RBD protein, and SARS-CoV-2. Uh, however, and this is interesting, this inhibitory effect of the natto extract was impaired upon heating as well as treating 
with the serine protease, protease inhibitor. So when you heat these things, it takes their ability to ferment naturally away. And then you have to add things in that they will call fermentation, but it's really not fermentation like cultures and yeast and things like this. It's a natural process that comes from unheated, uh, untampered with fruits, vegetables, and uh, other, other substances such as the juice. So originally that's how wine is supposed to be made. And same with cheese and milk needs to be a um, straight from the, without it needs to be unheated and straight from the farm straight from the cow and then it will actually preserve itself and then you have a magical substance that is able to impart that into your body detox your body keep you healthy uh, and and uh, add longevity that's why in some of these countries that eat a high degree of yogurt they live way past 100 um, and so that's what, what happens in Bulgaria you can research that out uh, another another one of these studies I'm going to show you very quickly I'm going to try to uh, pull up was this role of probiotics in the management of COVID-19 and so when we go down and find out what it says in the conclusion I'll try to get there quickly Battling with COVID-19 is still a long way to go. The number of COVID-19 cases increases, so on and so forth. Um, they, they lay that out first. But it says that utilizing probiotics as a complementary strategy besides vaccines to inhibit COVID-19 should be considered due to the postulated antiviral effects of probiotics and their metabolites. Additionally, the molecular mechanisms of probiotics can provide new insights into how probiotics combat SARS-CoV-2 infection, and so on. And so these are amazing substances that you should have every day, but nobody does anymore because they don't know it's been removed from society. And so there's very simple ways to do it. And one of the ways is to actually make your starter, which I've put in another video. And once you have your starter made, uh, you can add a little bit of uh, whole wheat flour in the morning and let it uh, let it ferment for, because it's going to ferment very quickly within a few hours once your start is made and once it does you can do just like this so here here it is and of course the glass looks messy because it gets around the glass but then what you can do is take a spoonful just like that and you can take honey raw honey in the same way you don't want it heated just like we covered that and i'm going to put well the easiest way to do it is to put it in your mouth then put some honey on the spoon and once you do that uh, you put that in your mouth and it's going to be something like putting honey on a lemon or creating lemonade so it's really interesting and it's very good uh, so i'm going to show you real quick I don't really want to talk with my mouth full, but then you have your honey. Mm. And in the same way that you eat sauerkraut for probiotics, sauerkraut is fermented cabbage. Uh, this is sour ground up wheat. So fermented wheat. It's ground up. Uh, it's the kernels or the seeds of wheat. And in the same way, it's fermented just the same. It's probably much more powerful because it's the actual seed. And so it's very good, especially with honey. You're going to love it, but you need to have some of this, really, I believe, every day. Because then it not only uh, has the ability to operate on its own, but anything else you eat, it acts as a starter on that. And so in your digestive tract, it ferments all of it and uh, imparts the health giving benefits of that really magical energy to your body and so I'm going to post a few of these studies but really you know it's kind of the statement of you know, giving someone a fish or teaching them to fish you can find all this information it's there for anyone that looks 
but it's not in the grocery store. You're not going to find it there. But once you find it and you're able to incorporate it into your life on a daily basis, you're going to really see changes, uh, not only to purify and detoxify your body, but to make the nutrients that you eat more assimilable and ward off viruses and sicknesses. It's a part of human health that has always meant to have been there, was there, it's now been removed. And I say, put it back. Give yourself a chance and give it a try. Hit like and subscribe down below. Let me know how this goes for you. And I'll see you in the next video.